A potential catastrophe. Dozens of people are raising concerns about the dangers of oil trains traveling through Baltimore. Over the years, there have been a number of close calls throughout the city. WJZ is live at City Hall downtown. Rick Ritter breaks down those concerns and what's being done. Rick? Well, Vic, many are calling for City Council to lead this charge. They want to know how many are coming through the city, what's exactly inside of them. Some call these trains a ticking time bomb. The images look like a war zone. It was just mayhem. It was just crazy. The sounds are horrid. It's what many fear could soon be a deadly reality for Baltimore. I don't know that Baltimore or the United States is ready for anything like that. Since 2013, we've seen a series of explosions with oil trains. Holy a blast in Rosedale followed a collision of a train with a truck. In North Dakota, 400,000 gallons of oil spilled after a derailment. And in Canada, more than 40 people were killed after a crash downtown. Nearly a year ago, 13 train cars derailed here at the Howard Street Tunnel. Fortunately, none of them spilled, but it was a potential disaster just feet from MICA. 165,000 people in Baltimore live in the blast zone, the tracks these trains travel on. Many are calling on city council to restrict the flow of those coming through the city. It endangers our city in a state which doesn't even approve of fracking. Ulysses Archie says his kids go to public schools in that zone, and he often fears the worst. I expect to go pick my kids up from school. There's no guarantee that you would do that with these trains doing this. Until something is done, they feel every day is a roll of the dice. And the problem with these oil trains is that they're a ticking time bomb. You literally never know when a derailment could happen. Now, just last week, a number of council members toured neighborhoods close by to these train tracks. The same group that protested today, they will meet next week, hoping to get something in front of city council by August. Vic? Rick, thank you. Last year, more than 2,000 petitions and handwritten letters from people who live along the blast zone were delivered to City Hall.